Okay, hello everyone. In a new video, on this one, we are going to solve an exercise related to electricity in the chapters of DC voltage, resistors, electric power, and energy. This exercise was a previous one in the previous exams in 2015 second session, second exercise. The title of this exercise is electric power. The aim of this exercise is to compare the sum of the electric power consumed by grouping of resistors with that consumed by the equivalent resistor of this grouping. Consider the, the, the circuit of the adjacent figure. So they mentioned this figure. Then now we can use it. Given that R1 is equal to 60 ohms. R2 is equal to 30 ohms. And R3 is equal to 20 ohms. And I1 is equal to 1 ampere. Then the trick in solving such type of exercises is to write the traverse current and the applied voltage on the given electric circuit or the diagram. So the value of I1 is given by 1 amperes. Now part 1 of this exercise, power consumed by the grouping. Number 1. They are telling me to calculate the voltage UAM across the terminals of R1. Then we need to calculate the voltage UAM across the terminals of R1 knowing that we have the traverse current which is given by 1 amperes and we have the resistance R1 which is equal to 60 ohms then using ohms law then let's apply ohms law to R1 always in physics we need to mention the law that we are using And this law is given by U is equal to Ri. No need to construct the triangle of this formula because the voltage is the quantity that we want to determine. Uh, and the voltage is given by UAM across the resistor R1 traversed by the current R1. The resistor R1 has a resistance given by 60 and the traverse current is equal to 1. Plugging this on the calculator will give me 60. Since R is in the SI and the I is in the SI, so the value of U will be in the SI, which is volts. Then the voltage UAM across the resistor R1 is equal to 60 volts. Then the voltage UAM is given by 60 volts. Notice that in this case R1 and R2 are in parallel, then according to law of uniqueness of voltages, they have the same voltage. Then the applied voltage across R1 is 60 volt, which is equal to the applied voltage across R2 given by 60 volts. Now in number 2, they are telling me show that the current carried by R2 is I2 is equal to 2 ohms. So in other words, we need to calculate the value of the current I2 tra traversing the resistor R2, knowing that now we have the applied voltage which is given by 60 volts. And the resistance of the resistor R2 is given to be 30 ohms. Then also by applying ohms law to R2, we can calculate the value of I2. Then apply ohms law to R2. Uh, constructing the triangle of this formula, because we have multiply, then U will be at the top and R I and I at the bottom. We are interested in calculating the value of I. So putting our hand over I, I is equal to U divided by R. I is given by I2 across the resistor R2 of an applied voltage UAM, which is equal to, now the applied voltage is given by 60. And the resistance of the resistor R2 is given by 30. Plugging this on the calculator will give me 2. Since U is in the SI and the value of R is in the SI, so the value of I will be in the SI, which is amperes. Then I2 is equal to 2 amperes. Now in number 3, they are telling me to use the current I carried by R3. And the word deduce means that we need to use the part just previously before. In part 2, we have determined the value of I2. And the value of I1 is already given. Then using the law of addition of currents, we can determine the value of I. Because this is I1. And this is I2. Notice that here at the point M, both currents I1 and I2 join back to give me the current I. So this is I. 
and then apply law of addition of currents then how do we apply this law always on the left we write the main current in this case is given by i which is equal to the sum of other electric currents given by i1 and i2 we are interested in calculating the value of i then i is equal to the to i1 which is given by 1 plus i2 which is given by 2 give me 3 since both of them are in the si amperes then the value of i will be in amperes so i is equal to 3 amperes Now, in number four, they are telling me calculate the electric power consumed by each of the three resistors. So, we need to determine the electric power across the three resistors that are given by R1, R2, and R3. Let's start by the resistor R1. Power across R1. The formula of the power is given by P is equal to times I. Here we are calculating the power across R1. So let's denote the power by P1 that, that has. Uh, so the resistor R1 has an applied voltage given by UAM traversed by the current I1. The value of the voltage UAM is given by 60. And the value of I1 is equal to 1. So this will give me 60. Since U is in the SI and I is in the SI, so the value of P will be in the SI, which is watts. Then P1 is equal to 60 watts. This is the electric power across the resistor, R1. Now we need to determine the electric power across the resistor, R2. So power, or let me say here electric power. Okay, now we need to determine the electric power across R2. Now the electric power given by P is equal to times I across the resistor R2. So let's denote this power by P2 that has an applied voltage of UAM traversed by the current I2. Now the value of UAM is given by 60. And the value of I2 is equal to 2. Plugging this on the calculator will give me 120. Since U is in the SI and the value of I is in the SI, so the value of P will be in the SI, which is watts. Then P2 is equal to 120 watts. Now finally the electric power across R3 The electric power is given by P is equal to U times I But now notice that in this case we don't know the applied voltage across R3 so we don't know the voltage U and B then we cannot use this formula in order to calculate the power across the resistor R3. All what we know is that the reverse current across R3 is given by 3 amperes and the resistance of R3 is given by 20 ohms. However, if we apply Ohm's law and Ohm's law is given by U is equal to Ri, Now, replacing u in this formula, we will get that r multiplied by i multiplied by i. So, this will give me r multiplied by i multiplied by i. So, here we get rid of the brackets because everything is multiplied by each other. Then, this will give me ri square. Now, p is equal to ri square. 
Then we have proved the following form of the electric power which is given by the resistance and the current. And notice that we cannot use this form unless we prove it first. Okay. Uh, why we have proved this form? Because all, all what we know across R3 is the traverse current is given by 3 amperes and we know that uh, its resistance is given by 20 ohms. Then using this formula we can calculate the electric power across R3. Now the power denoted by P3 across the resistor R3 traversed by the current I to the power 2. Now the value of R3 is given by 20. The value of I is given by 3 to the power 2. Now plugging this on the calculator will give me 180. Since the value of R is in the SI and the value of I is in the SI, so the value of P3 will be in the SI, which is watts. Then P3 is equal to 180 watts. And now in number five, they are telling me deduce the total electric power consumed by the three resistors. And the word deduce means that we need to use the, the part just previously before. In part four, we have determined the electric power across the three resistors given by P1, P2, and P3. And now we can calculate the electric power, which is given by the P total. And by total means the sum the sum of which electric powers given by P1 plus P2 plus P3. Always in physics, the word total means the sum. For example, total mass, total volume. Now, the value of P1 is given by 60. The value of P2 is given by 120. And the value of P3 is given by 180. This will give me 360. Since all of them are in watts, then the value of P total will be in watts. Then P total is equal to 360 watts. Now part two of this exercise. They are telling me power consumed by the equivalent resistor. Calculate the resistance R prime of the resistor equivalent to R1 and R2. So we need to determine the equivalent resistance, equivalent resistance R prime uh, corresponding to R1 and R2. Notice that here in this case R1 and R2 are in parallel. Always whenever we need to calculate equivalent resistance, we need to mention whether the two resistors are in parallel or in series are in parallel. So they usually give a half a mark for this statement. And because they are in parallel, then the equivalent resistance, which is denoted by R prime, is given by 1 over R prime is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Now the value of R1 is given by 60 and the value of R2 is given by 30. Now, how do we add these two fractions? Let's do the common denominator, which is given by this case 60 then here if we multiply by 2 and multiply by 2 this will give me 1 over 60 plus 2 over 60 which is equal to 3 over 60 now in this case we have calculated the value of 1 over r prime and not r prime here let's reduce this fraction by 3 so this will give me 1 over 20 now 1 over 20 correspond to the value of 1 over r prime Now, if we crisscross because we are interested in calculating the value of R prime, so R prime is equal to 20 ohms. And always whenever we calculate an equivalent resistance, we redraw the given electric circuit, including the new equivalent resistance. So let's say that this is the point A. And this is the point M. Now R1 and R2 are replaced by an equivalent resistance given by R prime. The value of R prime is equal to 20 ohms. Now from M we have a resistor R3, the resistor R3, and this is the point B. And now A, M, and B, these two electric components are traversed by the same electric current, which is given by I. 
Now in this case the value of i will not change and it's given by 3 amperes. Now in part 2 they are telling me show that the resistance equivalent to R prime and R3 is given by R is equal to 40 ohms. Notice that R prime and R3 are in series. Then let's say R prime and R3 are in series. In this case the equivalent resistance which is denoted by RE is equal to R prime plus R3. Now the value of R prime that we have already calculated is given by 20 and the value of R3 is equal to 20 given here. Then 20 plus 20 will give us 40. Since R prime and R3 are in that size, so the value of R will be in that size, which is ohms. Then R E is equal to 40 ohms. And whenever we need to cal we we calculate an equivalent resistance, we redraw the given electric circuit, including the new equivalent resistance. So let me draw here the new the new electric circuit. Okay, this is the point A. This is the equivalent resistance RE that is equivalent to R1 and R3. So the point M will disappear and this is the point B. And the resistor RE is being traversed by the current I of value of the same value 3 amperes. Now in number 3 they are telling me calculate the electric power PE consumed by RE. So we need to calculate the electric power across RE. This electric power is given by P is equal to U times I. Now in this case we don't know the voltage UA, UAB across RE. However we know the electric current traversing RE and we know the value of RB to given by 40 ohms. Then we can use the following relation that we have already proved which is given by P is equal to R I square because we know the resistance and the electric current traversing the resistor. This electric power is denoted by PE across the resistor RE traversed by the current I. The value of RE is equal to 40. The value of I is equal to 3 to the power 2. Plugging this on the calculator will give us 360. Since R and I are in the SI, so the value of P will be in the SI, which is watts. Then PE is equal to 360 watts. Now finally part 3, comparison of electric powers, they are telling me compare P total and PE. Now the value of P total calculated from the first part of this exercise is given by 360 watts and the value of PE is equal to 360 watts. So the comparison in this case by compare we need to mention if they are equal, uh, one less than the other or greater. Then in this case they are equal to each other, so P total is equal to PE. And this proves the following fact that we can calculate the electric power across across a grouping a grouping of resistors either by calculating the electric power across each given resistor then we add them up using P total which is the sum of electric powers or we can uh, uh, calculate the equivalent resistance of this grouping then Calculate the electric power across this equivalent resistance as we have done in part 2 of this exercise. And by this we have been solving this exercise. Hope it was beneficial for you guys out there watching it and see you soon in another one.